AI scientist is just to be able to automate the entire process of scientific discovery. Find interesting questions to ask that are then given to these systems or in collaboration with these systems that can then surface the evidence to prove or disprove this kind of question or hypothesis. We have an opportunity right now to build systems that can automatically go and figure out what discoveries are available to be made and surface them so that we can have the maximum amount of technological advancement as quickly as possible. Hi, I'm Andrew White, co-founder of Future House and head of science here. And Future House is on a mission to automate scientific discovery. So I'm a theoretical physicist by training, so I started out doing quantum information theory, and I ended up moving into biology and neuroscience because I just felt like there were way more open problems. And one of the key things that I took away from my PhD was that even if we had all the information we needed to understand how the brain works, we wouldn't necessarily know it because no one has enough time to go and read all the scientific literature. And even if they could read it, they wouldn't be able to keep it all in their head for long enough to like assemble a comprehensive model of the brain. That's when we started combining GPT-4 with tools, and this led to a project eventually called ChemCrow. And ChemCrow, I think, was one of the first AI agents, you could say. So this is a language model that's trying to use tools to accomplish scientific tasks. With chem informatics tools and with a self-driving robotics lab, we're able to do things like, say, make me a new molecule that's this specific color. Or I want to make this drug compound and make it on the robot and you know have no human involvement. And that was sort of the starting point for Future House, was we realized that these language models, when combined with tools, are able to do things that a scientist maybe could do, but not at the same scale, or things that even a human scientist couldn't do because they weren't experts in all these different tools. There are 20,000 genes in the human genome. Previously, there were only like non-stub Wikipedia articles for 3,000 of them. So we're like, okay, let's go and write the other 17,000. So we did that. And then we took Wikipedia articles written by our AI about the same genes, right, paired articles, and we provided them to PhD students and postdocs in biology. And we asked them to take random statements from those articles and evaluate blinded whether the statement was a hallucination. And they found twice as many hallucinations in the actual real Wikipedia articles that were written by humans as they did in the articles written by our AI. If you just make tools and send them out into the world, you are kind of at the whims of whether or not you advertise them well or they're easy to use. What really matters is if you can actually make new discoveries with the tools. So when we started Future House, one of the big bets we made was that we need an actual wet lab to validate discoveries. And so we're in this wet lab right now. And that sort of holds us accountable that when we take meetings upstairs, we can look at the lab and say, you know, how are you different than a frontier lab is that we are going to make new discoveries and validate them in the lab. I'm hoping we will see an effect that people will start to use it to make discoveries faster and we will see an actual tangible outcome of more discoveries at a quicker pace. Then once you can do this at scale, you can start working with sort of new forms of, of knowledge. And that was something that really pushed the limits of can you get an AI agent to work repeatedly and with high accuracy at a scale, like 100,000 outcomes. What scaling allows us to do is it allows us to overcome like the intelligence bottlenecks wherever they are, right? So whenever something is bottlenecked by intelligence, right, getting more intelligent models allows us to break through that bottleneck. The thing is that a lot of doing science is not just about intelligence. A lot of doing science is about like actually literally going to the wet lab and doing the experiments. There's lots of infrastructure they need. They need access to like computational tools. They need access to the scientific literature, specialized scientific databases, all those kinds of things. Those are the things that we're interested in building where I I think so far, we're far ahead of the more general purpose AI labs. Normally, to start the machine, one press this button here. We know that things like Moore's Law led to you know, radical changes in technology, where basically anything built around a CPU got better and better. And I think we've seen this again now with large language models, that any organization built around language models can just get better and better performance. One example of something we built with a platform was we took big matrix, like every single endogenous hormone, all the hormones that our body makes, and then every single behavior that can be observed in mice. And then we did this big calculation of what is the effect of hormone X on behavior Y. And this was, you know, 40,000 calculations that the agents did, where each one was tasked with do literature search on what amylin's effect is on learning. And that was a calculation that gave us a ton of information that's not reported anywhere in literature. And, you know, it was something that took a couple hours in our platform. And that's kind of the scale of intelligence that you can get to by building out a mature platform with, you know, good engineering principles. 
because a regulatory framework is just not set up today to deal with the volume of hypotheses that we'll be able to generate. My hope is that we'll be able to scale up the preclinical work in order to get much more quickly the data that's needed to generate confidence for the regulators, but we also may need to just like rethink the regulatory framework overall. Second order effect is that if we can make discovery faster at all stages of drug discovery, like for example, when you're designing a clinical trial, you can use our platform to make the clinical trial design better. So you have a higher chance of success of advancing to the next stage. And if that's true, yes, like uh, we hope that there will be so many more therapeutics in the pipeline that there will have to be some kind of a regulatory change. Improvements on both people submitting documents and hopefully with the FDA innovating to, to read them quickly and to process things more. And I think, you know, long term, of course, we want to have a better model of how drugs impact the human body so that we don't have to do animal testing, so that we can speed up the translation from preclinical to clinical. Whole of nature's instructions are printed in these four chemical letters. The future of what scientific research will look like with these tools, I think it's going to be very exciting, right? Because if you're a researcher, basically what you spend your time doing is you spend your time going and analyzing like an individual data set. And what I imagine is in two years, three years, five years, the average biology researcher is going to spend their time delegating to a bunch of agents that are going and carrying out specific workflows. One of them is doing a data analysis, one of them is going and coming up with new ideas, and you're just going in there to check on their progress, basically, QC what they're doing, and decide what you want them to do. They provide you with great ideas, you have to decide which of those ideas do you want to prioritize, and you're really in the seat of delegating. I honestly think it's going to be more fun, actually, to be a scientist, and I think science is just overall going to go a lot faster. What Futurehouse is doing with AI agents is that if you build your scientific discovery process around agents, then you know every six months or every three months, there will be better agents that can then make that process go faster and faster. And so I hope we feel this kind of you know discontinuity, this kind of inflection in scientific discovery, where people are amazed at how much can get done and an increasing pace from it.